Hey everyone, I've recently graduated from University of London, UOL, under the Centre Provider Singapore Institute Management, SIM. So I majored in Accounting and Finance. I would like to share more about my experiences uh, pursuing this degree. So if you are considering to enroll in UOL or whether other universities such as RMIT, uh, Birmingham, UOB, UB, Buffalo, uh, especially for Accounting and Finance, do stay tuned as I share more about my experiences on how the UOL degree is like and its recognition in the industry. So uh, the second part of the video, I will cover a bit about the experiences in SIM and the campus facilities and activities and what you can expect. Right. For UOL, there's a wide variety of majors that you can choose and specialize in, but do note that the modules of similar majors do have overlaps and there are a variety of choices for you to choose from your mods. Right. So the normal degree duration is about 3 years, with typically 12 modules to cover, so uh, 4 each year, la. so you split up 4 times 3. So there's a maximum restriction on the modules that you can take per year, so usually it spreads out over 3 years. So you can't say, I want to complete it within 2 years, so you take 6, 6. Yeah. So those that have relevant diplomas, however, might have exemptions, and you can actually uh, choose to take the bridging course for the exemption. So the intake for the bridging course is usually in June and then you will complete it by August the same year so that you can enroll for the September intake. So as you can see, it's a quite rush. It's a short two to three months course, very compact. And if you fail the bridging exams, you have to take the full degree course. So personally, I took A-level, so I can't apply for any exemptions. Yeah. So for you, I think most of you know already, it's a 100% exam based degree. Uh, the exam is once a year, one time a year, typically in the May period to July. So no projects or lecture based unless your centre provider comes up with additional classes like tutorials for certain particular modules that have been fairly, uh, fair, faring badly. Uh, yeah. So for my year, I remember there was tutorials for macroeconomics because the previous year, the passing rate was very low. So the SIM decided to come up with additional initiative to have tutorials for the particular module. So it's a case by case basis again. Yeah. So you have to be accountable for your progress throughout the year because there are no tests, no projects along the way, nobody to keep you in check. So if you're the kind that you need a group members to push you on to work, you know, or you only start working near deadline when the deadline is near, then this degree might not be suitable for you. Right. So if you enjoy studying alone with least human interactions and this is the cost for you because everything is done individually and actually uh, nothing and there's no group involvement, you know, it's very similar to the GCEA levels, uh, just that it's one paper per module per subject. Uh, unlike A levels, there's actually paper one, two, three, so actually the marks are still allocated uh, to the different papers. Uh, for this one, it's only one paper, you only have one chance and if the paper is not suited you know to what you have studied and turn out to be and then so be it you got to wait for the next year so let's say if you're the kind that you have exam phobia and tend to underperform especially during the exam time duration right then you might prefer other degrees because like for example rmit they have projects they have uh, the final year projects they take into involve uh, your grading system so at least it's more spread out and if you have this exam phobia then yep uh, you might not want to consider UOL. So you really have to be consistent about it. Unless you are very, very confident and you have a background in the module, then you can afford to start a bit later uh, studying. So uh, typically lectures and uh, semester starts in September all the way to May is your exam period, like I mentioned previously. So uh, lectures will start in September all the way to February. And from there, February onwards is usually a revision lectures and self-study period till May. So it might seem a lot of time, you see, but well, uh, that's why many students will procrastinate and end up starting revision too late, too late into the year. And bear in mind, if you fail this module, you can only retake it the next year. There's only one exam intake. So that is uh, for UOL. So for SIM campus, let's talk about the downside first. I think the greatest limitation is its land area, small, small physical compound, housing too many students, right? Way too many, I feel. Yeah, because we don't, SIM don't only uh, take in UOL students, but we have RMIT, uh, Buffalo, UB, UOB, and even diploma students and international uh, 
secondary school uh, students. Yeah. So during the day, uh, before or after class, if you want to study in school, I think it can be tough to find a place, right? So the compound, uh, I think you can give you a rough idea, is in between local polytechnics, universities, and private tuition schools like uh, MDIS, Kaplan. So it's an in between, right? So it's not very spacious, it's not very squeezy as well. So now that being said, right, you can still enjoy a fair share of campus facilities. Like we have a gym, a small one, a tennis court, a library, and a few food stores that you can still get your meals in over there. Uh, I would say the food actually in school is pretty not bad. Yeah, uh, but it's just very crowded during uh, lunch time. So try to avoid the peak hours, right? The campus is really a simple place for you to have lessons and study, nothing much. Well, there's actually a lot of CCAs which students don't take part in, right? So very few students, like I would say, a majority actually just come for classes and then uh, they'll go back home, right? So I feel it's a very good avenue actually to enrich your student life, right, for CCAs. So although, you know, UOL is a 100% individual exam base, uh, friends definitely play a big part in your uni journey, even your grades and your career. So if there's a chance, uh, I would say uh, pick up some CCAs that you like. Yeah. So it is also an opportunity for you to meet different university people in SIM uh, in the CCAs because uh, it opens up to all degrees you know, to apply for the CCAs. So along the ways, I feel that friends actually help you to solve questions in academics and help you to understand certain concepts that you are confused of when during lecture you will listen to and face. So furthermore, uh, most of us actually, it is the last stop of education before stepping out to the working world, yeah, as a degree. La. So I think friends form a good foundation for your network, especially the same course mates uh, in the same industry that you're likely to enter. It is important to make a mix around with similar profession peers, so you're more aware of the opportunities around you. Right, so that, that brings me on to internship. Right, so I think internships in school, uh, not compulsory for UOL, but uh, in fact, I think it's not compulsory for most of the degrees in SIM, like uh, RMIT or even uh, Birmingham. I'm not sure about the rest, but UOL is not compulsory, but that is important, I feel, because it's not just for your resume and your career building, right? But it really lets you find out what you want and what you do not want to work in the future. Let's say if you have more opportunities, you will know more of what is your preference in life, of like uh, what you want to work as, right? It gives you the exposure to find out what you prefer to work as as you move along in life. Well, SIM do have career portals and career fairs, but from my past experiences with peers, it is not very helpful. The support given is not very extensive. So many companies that come into the career fairs are usually not the popular ones that students look out for. So uh, as such, you still have to be independent and apply jobs on your own, right? Now, uh, when is a good time to do so? When is a good time to do uh, an internship, especially in UOL curriculum? So for our breaks, is during the summer period, typically from uh, end of June to September. So it's about three months, depending on your last exam date. So that's the best time to get one. However, do note that it is also the internship period for local uni people like from uh, NUS, uh, NTU, so they will be competing against you for the positions of internship. So it can get really competitive, especially in the finance field, whether accounting, uh, banking, and finance roles. So uh, this period is really competitive, so you have to fight with out. Whereas during our school term when it started, uh, at the first half of the uh, school term, during September to December, our fellow local universities are also having their school term. And for them, it's more busy because they have projects and everything. And they have midterms as well. Whereas for UL, we don't have this one exam in May, the following year, and get a better opportunity for internship during that period because less competition around, less people will be applying for internships in reputable companies during that time. So because for us, UL, we can actually tailor our lecture timetables subjected to availability of course so we can actually arrange for night classes right to uh, allocate for our internship during the day during the school term right 
as I said, uh, UOL course is 100% exam based and uh, it's in May the following year. So you can definitely catch up on your studies and afford to allocate less studying hours in uh, December. But make sure you focus on your subjects from January onwards. And you know that if you are uh, not the kind that you can focus coming Jan and you'll be too stressed about it, then no, that is not a good time for you to do internship. So I think it's about priorities and focus. If you know you cannot focus on your studies well while taking an internship, then don't do it because ultimately finishing the degree is key, right? The cost is high. We don't want to waste it. If you fail your modules, your subjects in May, you have to retake it in the following year because there's no other exam intakes and other dates. So it's a one year that you have to waste. Okay, to the topic on careers after graduation, right? Especially in the finance field, right? Be it accounting, banking, investments, or any other related. Uh, employers really look at your resume on a holistic point of view, right? You're not going to land yourself a high paying or a dream job that you desire by just having a degree cert, right? By applying. It's so competitive out there in the marketplace. You need to deliver more value than just a degree cert. So maybe you can add on your working experience, your internship, all these value adds to your resume and your application, right? So for accounting, at least the area I'm in, uh, I hope to give some advice to those who aspire to be accountants, uh, auditors, tax, or doing anything related to the accounting field, right? Do consider taking professional papers early because it gives you an edge over your peers who have the same degree cert, right? It really value adds your learning as well as your own value in the marketplace, right? So this is just a brief structure of how the SIM UOL program is like. If you have any more questions for me, do comment down below so that I will answer them to the best of my experience. See you in the next video. Thank you.